You don't have to be an expert stylist or top interior designer to create a beautiful Easter table, but you do have to understand these seven basic principles, the secret sauce, if you like. In this video, I'm going to reveal the seven secrets to a beautiful table setting, helping you to unleash your creativity and create a beautiful Easter table that's going to wow your family and friends this year. And once you've mastered these seven basic principles, tablescapes for any season, any occasion in the year are going to be an absolute breeze. Hi, it's Lynn from The Seasonal Touch, where I help you find joy in the time of year and also make home your haven. So if you've ever drooled over those Instagram or Pinterest images of beautiful table settings, you've maybe just been a bit overwhelmed about where to start to create something like that for yourself, especially when it's a holiday time or a festival or a special celebration, something like Easter, where potentially your whole family and friends are going to be gathering and you want to make it really something special and memorable. And if you do find value in this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It really does make a huge difference into how many other people might be able to discover this video and find it useful too. And make sure that you stick around until the end because I'm going to be giving you some bonus tips on how to host the perfect Easter celebration. So secret number one is to come up with or choose a theme or a concept for your meal, for your tablescape. Sounds straightforward. When you think about it, what you're really trying to do is to create something that's really different to how your table would normally look just on a regular night, just a regular kind of family meal. Now, there's so many things you can choose from. How much you drill into this is really up to you. And there's lots of things that you can consider when you're trying to come up with your theme, when you're trying to decide what you want to go with. So let's think about a few of the things that you should or could consider to come up with your theme or your concept. So the first thing to consider is what is the purpose of this meal that you're creating the tablescape for? Is it a holiday celebration for Easter, Christmas, Halloween dinner perhaps? Is it a special celebration maybe for a birthday or a special anniversary? So what's the purpose of the meal? That's the first thing that you should consider. Second thing I would say is what's your own personal choice? What do you love to do? You're going to get to be creative in this process. So what do you love? Do you love to do something that's more vintage or more contemporary or maybe rustics your style? So what's your style? Next thing to think about is who are the guests? Is there a guest of honour? What might they like? If it's a special birthday dinner or perhaps an anniversary dinner, who are the people being honoured? What, what might they like? Are they older? Are they younger? So just take these things into consideration when you are coming up with your concept or your theme. Next thing to consider would be the season and the setting. We already said, you know, is it for Christmas? Is it for Easter? That will influence or give you some inspiration. But, you know, if it's not perhaps for anything like that, but it just happens to be happening in spring or it's happening in summer, what inspiration can you draw from the season? When you think about the Thanksgiving table, how much, um, how much does autumn and fall play a part in the Thanksgiving table? It really does. Same with Easter. How much does spring influence your decor? Maybe it's a, a summer party that you're doing something in the garden and so there's summer could play a big part in there. So think about the season and the setting. Is it an indoor dinner or is it an outdoor dinner? And that will influence perhaps a lot of you know, what you might want to use for your tablescape. Another thing that you definitely should consider is your budget. A lot of themes might require quite elaborate decor that you just might not have a budget for. So you definitely have to take that into account. And what resources do you already have available? If you've got a lot of, you know, plates and cutlery and glasses in a particular style, then it might make sense to go with that style so that you don't have to buy a whole lot of new things. Or maybe you've got a really good friend who you know has a big collection in a particular style that you might be able to borrow. So think about your budget and think about your available resources. 
You also want to consider the practicality of your theme. You want to make sure that you've got the time to execute the vision that you've got in your head. You're not creating something that's overly elaborate that you've just not got the time to actually pull together. Think about the space that you are hosting in and make sure that you practically can create the kind of table that you want within the space that you've got. You might also need to think about the climate that you live in. Is it practical to do the kind of tablescape that you want if you're thinking about maybe an outdoor dinner, depending on the time of year and your climate? Is that going to be practical? So think about all these kind of practical elements. And another thing just to consider is the whole kind of memorability of it all. You really do want to be creating something, a theme or a concept that's going to give you and your guests some great memories. So that's another thing to take into consideration. And finally, one thing that I would suggest you do once you have decided on your theme or your concept just to round this process off is to think about and jot down just a couple of words that you would use to describe your theme. Is it perhaps elegant and sophisticated? Is it rustic and relaxed? Is it colourful and fun? Once you've got these words, that will help you keep on track because it will help you make decisions further down the road. If you're maybe choosing something to go on your table, you can ask yourself, is this elegant and sophisticated? If it is, it's in. If it's not, bye-bye. So secret number two for a great tablescape is to have good colour harmony. And there are a couple of things that you should think about when deciding what colours to go for. You're going to want to try to align it with your theme. So perhaps if it's elegant and sophisticated that you're going for, maybe neon colours are just not going to work. But if it's colourful and fun that you're going for, neon colours might just be the very thing that you need. You want to align your colour palette with the you know, the reason for your gathering. If it's a Christmas dinner, for example, you're going to have an appropriate uh, colour palette for that. If it's um, for an anniversary dinner, you're going to think about what colours would work well for that. If it's for a baby shower, maybe think about the colours for that. It seems pretty straightforward, but you know, you wouldn't want perhaps a red and gold theme for Easter. So just take that into consideration when you're coming up with your colour palette. Another thing to think about when picking your colours, again, is going back to the whole seasonal aspect. What time of year is this event happening? You know, um, if it's later in the year, then those kind of cosy autumnal colours might give you that sort of intimate setting that you're looking for. Perhaps in spring, particularly thinking about Easter, you maybe do want those more vibrant spring light colours. So take into consideration the time of year when you're thinking about your colour palette. The other thing that you want to consider when picking your colour palette is the venue and the setting. You want the colours to kind of complement their surroundings. So that might be important if you're having, say, an outdoor dinner or indoors, for instance, when I organised my recent um, dinner event for my husband, I went for black and gold, which I thought he would appreciate. It was quite masculine. But another reason for picking black and gold is in our home, we actually do have a lot of black accents. And so I thought that that colour palette would sit really well in the surroundings, in the room that we were actually holding the event in. The other thing that you might want to consider when you're picking your colours is the whole idea of colour psychology you know certain colours can kind of um, evoke a particular mood so maybe those darker colours might create a more sort of intimate setting whereas lighter and brighter maybe a slightly more kind of relaxed uh, event so that might be something that you want to take into consider is the whole colour psychology aspect of it also think of the cohesiveness with your tableware if you've got perhaps one dinner set that you really need to use, then you want to pick colours that are going to work with that. If you're lucky enough to have a completely neutral um, dinner set, then you know, you've know you got a bit more choice with your colours. But you do need to take that into account. Maybe you've got stunning glassware that's in a particular colour hue that you might want to pull that in and you know find complementary colours for that. So 
think about that, you know, what elements you're going to be using and what colours would work well with it. You also just want to maybe think about the lighting in the space that you're going to be having it in. If you're perhaps hosting, you know, an outdoor dinner with lots of natural light, then, you know, you want maybe colour, a colour palette that's going to work well with that. But if you are in a very, very uh, dark room, maybe you want to, you know, fit in with that. Maybe you want those darker colours to give you that more intimate setting or maybe you want to give something that's going to contrast with the light in the room. So these are all things to think about just when you are pulling your colour palette together. Secret number three and it's all about the layering. You know that creating a beautiful tablescape isn't just about tossing a bunch of things randomly on the table and hoping for the best. It's practically an art form, but it is an art form that I believe that we can all learn. And the secret to getting it right, it's all in the layering. That can make the difference between your table just looking meh and it looking absolutely wow. Think about it. The layering is the thing that gives your table this magical depth and vibe and it really is the secret sauce that can help you create that really instagrammable tablescape that you're looking for so let's break down the elements of the layering and learn what they are and how to get that layering right okay you're going to start with the basics and that is going to be your tablecloth that's going to form the backdrop to everything. That's the foundation that you're going to build all your layers on from there. After the tablecloth comes the charger plates. Now, I think the charger plates are a bit of the unsung hero of a good table setting because they just add that extra depth, that extra dimension, and they can either be sophisticated or they can be rustic or if you're looking for a real pop of colour, you can do that with charger plates. So charger plates would be the next layer that you would put down. And then you'd probably be building your um, crockery from there. Start with your dinner plate. You want your dinner plate to be a bit smaller than the charger so that you do get that nice border around and then add all the other plates in there. I quite often put all the plates that I'm intending to use for the dinner, I will layer them up when I'm setting the table initially, have them all there when people come into the room. I think there's nothing wrong with that. It makes, it adds to the layers. It gives you that lovely effect. And then it's two minutes just to go around and whip all the plates away while everybody's sitting down. And I just make a bit of a, a kind of fun comment about it. You know, that's for the setting. Let's get practical and take all the plates away ready to serve. But it does make a huge difference to how the table looks when you first approach it if you've got all those plates layered. Another thing that counts towards the layers is your, um, your cutlery. You're going to have all that laid out and the glassware. I think the glassware, it's almost like jewellery on the top of the, the layering because it usually does just sparkle. You don't want the table to look too cluttered, so I think just one wine glass and one water glass is perfectly sufficient. I know back in the day, etiquette said that you should have both a red and a white wine glass on the table, but I think nowadays most people have a preference for one or the other. And I usually just keep some spare glasses to the side. And if somebody does want to switch in the middle of the meal, then it's easy enough just to grab a, a, a spare clean glass and, and give that to them. But I think it clutters up most tables to have all those extra glasses on there. And finally, the centerpiece or the centerpieces. And these are usually your head turners, your real kind of showstoppers. And whether they are candles or flowers or something entirely different that's in keeping with your theme, that is probably going to be the layer that is going to be most memorable. So moving on to secret number four, and that is that you need to consider the balance and symmetry of the table. So it's just as important as getting the layering right is to find the right balance and symmetry for your table. Why does it matter? Well, we're going for this visual harmony and that doesn't happen by accident. 
you want to just take a minute to make sure that it really does sit well with the eye, that it is visually appealing. And a lot of that has to do with the balance and the symmetry of how things are laid out. So start with the basics, your tablecloth. You want to make sure that that is properly centered on the table. You wanna make sure that it's the right size for the table. It has to have a decent overhang on all sides. You don't want a cloth that's that's barely you know, coming over the edges of the table because the balance will just be off. It just won't look right. But you want to make sure that it is centered on the table and that you've got, um, you know, a similar amount hanging down either side. So you, you want to make sure that all that is right. And if you are adding a, a runner to the center of the table, you know, take a few minutes with a measuring tape and just make sure that you have got that runner dead center because you will you will notice if it's off and you might not be able to work out why it looks off but your eye will be drawn to it so just take those few minutes to measure it and just make sure that it is absolutely dead center next think about your charger plates they really act like the sort of anchor for every place setting so it is really important that you've got the spacing right now it can be tricky when you've got um, you know, a different number of people down one side of the table than the other, but take that into account when you're working out you know, how you're going to pull the table together. For example, this past Christmas, I was in a department store and I saw a table setting that I really fell in love with and I thought, that's what I'm gonna do for my table this year. And what they had done was they had taken runners and they'd laid them across the table um, at intervals all the way up and it just looked stunning that whole layering and it just looked great until I realized that it would not work for me because I was going to have an odd number of guests down one side to the other so I was maybe I can't remember what it was say I had eight down one side and nine down the other and when you have the runners across the table you have to have them the place settings exactly opposite each other otherwise on the one side it would just look really odd because you wouldn't have the the place setting in the middle of the runner it would be sort of half on one runner half off it would just look terrible it would throw the whole balance and symmetry out so when you're designing the table think about the balance and symmetry of the kind of charger plates and you know if you have got odd numbers that might limit what you do on the table when you are setting out your glassware try to have them in the same position at each setting it can get a bit tricky on the corners because of the table because sometimes it gets a bit more crowded up there but just do your best just keep that in mind because again you might look at the table and think it's just off balance what's wrong and then realize that you've got you know the wine glass and the water glass set on the opposite side or or back to front or something so just pay attention to how you're setting out your glasses and try to keep them the same all the way around at each place setting and the other thing to think about you know with balance and symmetry are your table centers your center pieces you know you maybe you've only got one if it's a smaller table but if you've got a big long table or you know a, a u-shaped table or an l-shaped table you may have centerpieces you know at intervals all down the table so just take a think about that how are you going to set them out just make sure that it's pleasing to the eye and that you have taken the whole balance and symmetry into consideration when you are you know, setting the positions for your centerpieces. And secret number five is getting the lighting ambience right. Let's think about it. Lighting can be so important, you know, when creating the right atmosphere and it can really make or break your whole tablescape. Lighting is not about banishing the darkness. Lighting is about setting the tone and the mood. So jumping back to when we said, you know, when I said, think, you know, try and think of a few words that um, describe your concept or the, the kind of theme that you're going for. Think about those words and make sure that your lighting aligns with that. If you're looking for elegant and you know intimate, then your lighting should fit with that. If you're looking for light and bright and fun, then again, your lighting needs to kind of fit with that as well. Think about where you are 
having the dinner, experiment with it at the time of day that the dinner or the meal is going to be taking place. You know, you might think it looks great and then you walk into the room, you know, you might check it all out in the middle of the day, but the dinner isn't until eight o'clock at night, it's dark outside and you walk in and you realise that the lighting is just not right at all. So have a think about it in advance at the time of day that the meal is going to be taking place and just sort of play around with things. You know, maybe you are throwing a, a lunchtime meal or an afternoon meal and you realise when you walk into the room that there's sun streaming straight through that window and that your guests on one side of the table might be absolutely blinded. So you need to have a think about, oh, and, you know, put a sunshade or some sort of blind or something like that up. So think about all of these things. Um, you know, another example, at the recent dinner that I threw for my husband, I had thought about putting twinkle lights down the centre of the table. And I had a go a few days before at the time of day that, you know, in the evening, the dark light that was happening and realised that the lights that I had in mind were not going to be suitable because they were actually too bright. They would be blinding my guests if I had them running down the middle of the table. They would just be too much of a distraction. So I decided against that. If I'd built the whole tablescape and added them all in, then switched them on in the day, on the day of the event, it would have been a really difficult job to sort of deconstruct it all again. So jumping back to the concept of layers, layers on the table, I think that you could almost consider the lighting to be that invisible layer, that if you get it wrong, it can be really jarring. You might not instantly realise what it is that, that just makes your tablescape feel wrong, but it could potentially be the lighting and that's why it's so important to give it consideration because it can just make a huge difference. Get it right and you will be creating that sort of atmosphere and that vibe that you're going for and then it will make all your efforts on the table worthwhile. And secret number six, that's all about the personal touches that you add. Putting together a beautiful table is not just about the way that the table looks. But it's actually about, and some would say maybe even more importantly, about the way that you make your guests feel when they sit around it. You want them to feel welcome. And one of the ways that you can do that is by adding a few personal touches to your table setting. Personal touches really can add that little sprinkling of magic to your table. It tells your guests that you've thought about every detail and really put a lot of thought and care into making them feel welcome to your table. It creates an atmosphere that's not only uniquely yours, but it really has put them at the heart of everything that you've pulled together. Personal touches can be both in relation to you as the host and also to your guests. So here are just a few ways that you could add that personal touch to your table. First thing you might want to think about are your place cards. These could be just a beautifully handwritten uh, name on a card. It might be a little personalised note. You might want to get a little photograph of each of your guests. But yeah, place cards can be one of the easiest ways just to add that little personal touch to your table setting. The next way that you might want to add a personal touch is by doing some personalised menus. Um, these could incorporate the theme or the, the kind of concept that you're going for for your dinner, but it just lets your guests know about what culinary delights are going to be arriving in front of them over the course of their meal. Another way to add a personal touch is with some homemade centrepieces. Ditch the store-bought ones and go for something that you have created or pulled together yourself. And this could be as simple as flowers in a vase. It might be something that you can do that's personal to you. Perhaps you're known for your beautiful garden full of um, wild flowers and maybe you can pull some wild flowers together and use them as a centerpiece or maybe your guest of honor has a love of one particular flower and so you personalize the centerpiece to them by using that flower in the centerpiece so your centerpieces that's another way that you can certainly personalize your table setting what about going for some diy coasters you can have these easily made now on the likes of etsy or that type of um, marketplace 
where you can upload photographs of each of your guests and then that can be a keepsake that they take home. So that's just another little idea to personalise your table setting. Another way that you could personalise your table setting is to have a little gift at each place setting. You might want to use a little mini gift bag and you could coordinate this with your colour palette and just add a little personal something into each bag for each guest. And secret number seven is to remember that details matter. And while the big picture can give you that immediate wow factor, even the grandest project relies on those small components being right. And that's why the details really matter in the overall success of your whole tablescape and your whole dinner. And so here are just a couple of things that you'll want to pay attention to. Make sure that everything is spotlessly clean. Your cutlery, give it a little wipe and a polish as you put it down and make sure that all of your glassware is completely free of fingerprints. You know, sometimes we take things out of the dishwasher and they're just not quite 100% clean and you don't notice. So just make sure that when you're putting everything down on your table that you're giving it a quick once over, make sure that everything is clean and sparkling. The other detail to pay attention to is to make sure that wherever possible, you've got coordinating or matching elements, unless you're going for that kind of mismatched um, effect, you know, with your dishware and your glasses, you know, try to make sure that all your wine glasses, for instance, are roughly the same shape and size. If you've got some huge ones and some tiny ones, then that can just look a bit off. So make sure that everything that should match does match and that will just help to give you that whole cohesive look. And, you know, going back to saying, you know, make sure, for instance, the very basics that you've got a tablecloth that fits the table, that it isn't just you know, just overlapping or that it isn't far too long and trailing on the floor. So it's these kind of little things that just the little details that just make all the difference. Another detail would be to think about having a seating plan. Now, I always do like to have a seating plan and use place cards to tell everyone where to sit. I think we've all been there. We've gone to a dinner and everyone approaches the table and there's that kind of awkwardness about who should sit where and you ask the host, where do you want us to sit? And the host's busy doing other things and there's that kind of who should sit next to the host? Where do the hosts want to sit? Where should we leave you know, seats for the host to sit? And in any collection of people, there's always one or two that you think maybe they shouldn't actually sit together. And equally, you probably have people around that table that you think it would be really nice for them to sit together and have the opportunity to chat and get to know each other a little better. So I think putting a seating plan in place is probably one of the details that you should pay attention to and definitely have to make your whole dinner a success. Another little detail that you could pay attention to is to have some themed decor accents, you know, appropriate to your theme. So let's say you're having a summer dinner, um, maybe it's a kind of beachy theme. So having some little shells on the table just to, you know, further kind of cement that theme would be great or any kind of seasonal element. So that's just another little detail. It just shows that you've gone that extra mile and and, you know, really cared about giving your guests the best experience. Another detail to pay attention to is your seating positions and your table and chair heights. Table and chair heights particularly important if you are maybe, you know, um, borrowing some extra chairs or even hiring them in and working with your own table or, you know, chairs from one place, tables from another. You want to make sure that they match and that everybody is going to be really comfortable sitting at that table. And your table spacing, your, your setting spacings, a good rule of thumb is to stick to 24 inches between the center of one place setting and the center of the next. And that should give your guests plenty of elbow room. Obviously, there are certain occasions where you know you're going to have to cram them in a little bit more, but ideally you want to go for 24 inches.
And the last little detail to pay attention to is one of alignment. You know, have a look at your table. Are all the chargers roughly the same distance back from the edge of the table? You know, is your cutlery kind of in alignment at the same distance roughly back from the edge of the table? Do all your chairs look nice and, and straight when you look down your table? They're just tiny, tiny little tweaks, but they're just the details that can make all the difference to how your whole table setting looks when your guests approach it. Now, earlier in the video, I did promise that if you hung around to the end, I would share some of my bonus tips for hosting the perfect Easter celebration. And my top tip is to choose a menu for your dinner where as much as possible it can be prepared in advance. Now, some celebrations throughout the year, you know, I'm thinking about Christmas, maybe Thanksgiving, your menu's pretty set. You don't have quite as much flexibility, maybe for starters, appetizers, desserts you do, but for the main event, if you're going with tradition, you're kind of, you know, restricted to that. But for most other celebrations, you can switch up the menu to whatever works for you. And I just think that the more you can get done in advance, the better. It's a lot less stressful for you because the bulk of it's done and consequently it's a lot less stressful for your guests because if you're not stressed and you're more relaxed then they are going to feel that from you and they're going to be much more relaxed as well and then it just allows you to spend more time with your family and friends and isn't that what it's all about that's why we're doing this that's why we're gathering everybody around the table to spend time with them and there's nothing worse than you know going to be hosted by someone and you never see them because they're stuck in the kitchen you know getting the the meal ready so as much as possible get your meal um you know as much of it done in advance as possible and i've got a great book by beloved british cook mary berry i think it's called uh, cook now eat later or something like that i'll link it in the description below but it's become my go to because there's so many recipes in there and they're not all prepared in advance it'll tell you you know if you're going straight through you know it gives you the whole recipe but if you are preparing in advance it'll say you know do it up to the end of stage five and then it tells you what to do whether to freeze it or refrigerate it or whatever and then it tells you what to do to kind of finish it off so i think preparing as much in advance undoubtedly my top tip for the perfect celebration for easter my next hosting tip would be to not get so hung up on your tablescape and creating that perfectly Instagrammable table that you forget about the rest of the room or your home. You know, you want that to be really welcoming to your guests as well. So whether that's, you know, popping a little scented candle somewhere or some vases of seasonal flowers or, you know, whatever that might be, just don't forget about all these little touches elsewhere. Make the whole place welcoming and not just the table. And so then my last tip is just to remember to relax and enjoy yourself. I mean, all of these things, you know, trying to create this perfect table, it's all fun and it allows you to be creative. But the bottom line is, you know, it doesn't really matter. Same as what we said about in the Christmas series, mishaps will happen. Things won't go exactly according to plan. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is that you have gathered your family and friends and you're going to spend a few hours with them creating memories. And that's really what matters the most. And if you are finding value in this video, please do hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything at all. All it does by subscribing is add me to your favorites list. And it actually also helps other like-minded viewers find this video. You liking it, you subscribing it, puts it out there. So you'd actually be helping others that are like yourself, that are interested in this kind of topic to find this video too. So yeah, please do hit subscribe. So now for a bit of fun. Why don't you go make yourself a cuppa, grab yourself a pad and a pen, start the video again from the beginning and just work through it and just think about your next dinner, your Easter table, if that's what it is that you want to create and, you know, work through each of my um, secrets and think how they would apply to you. What would your theme be? What colours would you use? 
what things do you have to get the layering right and just have fun think about it let your creative side you know let that loose and see what ideas you can come up with to create a beautiful tablescape for your next gathering the video will all be broken down into chapters so once you're happy that you've kind of got to grips with one um secret one concept one one chapter you can you know go on to the next one and by doing all this little bit of preparation then when you do come to create your table and, and set it all, you'll have done all the planning, you'll have gathered everything that you need and it will make the whole table setting process much faster and much easier, just leaving you time over the whole Easter holiday period to spend with your family and friends. So if you are interested in seeing how I pulled together a very special tablescape for my husband's 60th birthday celebrations last month, then I'm going to link that video on the screen here. So please do go and take a look and I'll see you in there.